The Dutch settlers of South Africa, or the Boers, once held their own nations. By the 1900s, the republics were conquered by Britain and added to the Cape Colony to form the Union of South Africa. The disappearance of the Boer republics was thanks to the Second Boer War. Could the Second Boer War have been avoided, and could the Boers remain independent to this day? The Second Boer War was provoked by the Jameson Raid, an attempt by the British to end the South African Republic, also known as Transvaal. The raid ultimately failed and brought the two Boer republics, the other being the Orange Free State, closer together in opposition to Britain. In this timeline, the Jameson Raid still occurs, but never escalates into war. The Boers still received German support, further alienating Britain. Without the conquering of the Boer republics, the South African colonies are never consolidated and merged. With the war nearly avoided, an uneasy peace lasts for now. As World War I breaks out, the Germans try to get the Boers on their side. Being surrounded on practically all sides by the British, the Boers remain neutral. As the German colonies in Africa collapse, the British begin preparing for an invasion of the Boer republics. The Boers are war warned of the coming British invasion from Germany. They as well notice the military buildup on their borders. Some months later, the British invade, beginning the, this timeline's Second Boer War. With the Boers being prepared, the British make minor encroachments into the republics. The Boers gain some support as some German troops flee to the republics and fight for their independence. As the British make minor progress, the Boers make a push into the colony of Natal. The advance takes the British by surprise and allows the Boers to capture the capital city of Pietermaritzburg. The Second Boer War ends around the same time as the First World War. In the peace treaty, much of the borders remain the same, except for in the Natal. The eastern half of Natal becomes the British colony of Zululand, while the rest becomes the Boer Natali Republic. Peace lasts between the Boers and Britain. As Britain and France declare war on Germany, the Boers send aid to Germany in return for their help in the Second Boer War. The British, though mostly distracted in Europe, begin a naval blockade of Natalia. The blockade results in some naval skirmishes, though it never escalates into war. The blockade eventually ends as World War II ends. British-Boer relations still remain cold as the Cold War begins. Without the Union of South Africa forming, the Cape Colony remains in existence. Without the Cape controlling eastern South Africa, the colonists are the majority. Speaking of the colonists, they are mainly English and speak English, thanks to the Boers never moving to the Cape and becoming the Afrikaners of today's South Africa. With both the Cape and Boers having racist views against the Africans and wanting to keep control over their nations, they find an unlike unlikely alliance. Many in the Boer Republic see little need for three separate nations and begin moving towards unifying. Sometime around the 1940s to 50s, Transvaal, the Orange Free State, and Natalia unite to form the United Republics of Boerland. The Cape eventually gains independence as the Republic of the Cape of Good Hope. As Rhodesia declares independence, a military pact is formed between them, the Cape, and Boerland. Immediately after the signing of the Salisbury Pact, the Cape and Boerland get involved in the Rhodesian Bush War. The sanctions on Rhodesia are practically useless as they receive economic and military aid from their allies. With so much support from their allies, Rhodesia eventually wins the Bush War. Soon after the Bush War begins the Angolan Civil War. The Cape, much like South Africa, supports UNITA against the MPLA, which is supported by Cuba. Thanks to the Salisbury Pact, Rhodesia and Boerland aid UNITA as well. Thanks to more support, UNITA wins the Civil War and forms the Democratic People's Republic of Angola. Angola joins the Salisbury Pact. During the Cold War, the Salisbury Pact was tolerated thanks to its anti-communist stance. However, as the Cold War ends, many people want to see changes in the nations. As politics change in Angola, they leave the pact. With Borland, the Cape, and Rhodesia remaining mostly isolated on the world stage, their future is uncertain.